How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. I decided to start the new year off by sawing this model in half. Today's video is a classic Boilai Bondi Star Wars diorama from one of my favorite Star Wars movies outside the original trilogy, which is Rogue One. This is the third 88 Walker model that I've put together, with the first two being from my Hoth build from a couple years ago. I've said it many times before, and I'll say it again, these snap fit kits from Bondi are always a pleasure to work with. I love all of the detail. It's fun to be able to assemble and handle an ATAT -AT and see parts of it that didn't get much screen time in the films. Just being able to admire the way that these vehicles were kit bashed originally is really fun for me. The kits are made to fit together with no adhesives, but because I'm going to be cutting this bad boy in half with my bandsaw, I used some plastic cement to ensure that it wouldn't fall apart in any unintended ways. I had all four of the legs assembled, but before gluing those in place, it was time to saw this Imperial Walker in half. I set the height of the guide with just enough clearance for the body of the AT at to get through, and I threw on some safety glasses. In a previous diorama, where Luke cuts an ATST in half, I got a lot of complaints about how unrealistic it would be for a lightsaber to make a cut like that. So I almost decided to have Luke cut this whole ATAT in half just for fun. I decided it was better to recreate a shot from Rogue One where one of these is shot in half by an X Wing. Technically, the vehicle is an ATACT or AT ACT, uh, but we'll make this one work. After scuffing up the cut line, with a rotary tool so it wasn't so clean, I moved on to the base, which is a gesso board and some XPS foam, which I'm going to turn into the serene sandy beach of Scarif. After the foam and gesso board were the same size, I marked out where I wanted the shoreline, and I cut that out with my utility knife. I then made the surface a little more natural and organic looking using a butane torch. And after gluing the foam down to the wooden base using some foam safe super glue, I threw on some gloves because it was time to add a terrain paste. This terrain paste was just some run-of-the-mill sculpt mold which I mixed up with water and spread out with my gloved hand. I thought I could do a little bit more sculpting with the sculpt mold to create the sandy waves on the beach, but that didn't end up happening. Instead, to add some sandy texture to the beach, I sprinkled on some woodland scenic snow, which is finer than all of the sand that I had, making it look better as sand than my sand. I poured that into little lines that you'd see on a sandy beach and I sprayed it with isopropyl alcohol and watered down white glue and I left it to dry. And while the beach dries, it's time to prime the ATACT. I took this outside and primed it and you may not notice much of a difference, but I did prime it with a slightly darker gray that will hold paint better. I then broke out my airbrush and began painting going over all the panel lines with black. I also gave the interior of the body a coat of black as well. Adacts have a slightly darker shade of bluish gray than their sealess counterparts, so I added a layer of that before masking off the areas I wanted to remain gray and added the orange cargo doors. The C in ATACT stands for cargo, after all. After peeling off the masking tape, I applied a layer of a wash over the rest of the entire walker, and I dabbed that off of all of the open areas and raised areas with a paper towel, leaving me with some nice grime and weathering. With the painting of the walker done, it was time to bring back my now dry base and paint that as well. I painted the sand on the beach the color of sand, and then I painted the sand under the water the color of sand, but also the color of water, with a subtle gradient going all the way up to the shoreline. I didn't want the color of the resin to have to do all of the work. To protect the paint job from resin, I added some resin, to prevent any leaks as well as tiny bubbles from forming which worked fairly well, but I had to go back and apply a layer of Mod Podge as well, just for good measure. Off camera, I ran some wires through the legs of the AC, AC, DC, which needed to be in place before the resin could be poured. I drilled a tiny hole beneath each foot that contained the wires, and then I glued those in place, and I used some UV resin to seal the foot that was standing in the water. Once those were in place, I got the batteries and the wiring situation under the base figured out, and then I made an acrylic dam to hold the resin in place while it cures, the edges of which I sealed with more UV resin. With that done, it was time to mix up some pristine aquamarine seawater. I used a shallow pour, two part epoxy resin, and after measuring out two equal parts, which I eyeballed, I added three drops of aquamarine alcohol ink and I stirred the parts together. 
I made more than I needed, but that's all right because all the excess was poured into some molds which I will use in future videos. Recently the pump on my vacuum pot broke, so I wasn't able to remove the bubbles, but because this is moving seawater, the bubbles weren't necessarily a bad thing. I did pop all the surface bubbles with a butane torch, and then, once that was cured, I removed the acrylic walls, which gave me no trouble at all. Which gave me some trouble at all. After all of the acrylic had been removed, I decided to try something new. I mixed up a new batch of clear resin, as well as some cloudy, opaque resin, to try and create some waves. Whatever I did was not what I saw online, where people get the results of beautiful waves crashing on a seashore, uh, but I was able to make it look like it was stirred up sandy water around the feet of the walker, so it worked out in the end. I bought these little plastic palm trees, which look very plastic, so I took those outside, I primed them gray before giving them a more natural and realistic paint job myself. Now that I'm thinking about it, this is the first time I've ever used palm trees in a diorama, and I kind of like it. If you can think of other good ways to integrate palm trees into dioramas in the future, let me know in the comments. Maybe something pirate related? I then assembled all my little palm trees and I ran some metal rods into the base of each tree and then stuck them in place. The goal was to arrange the trees in a way that was natural, but having grown up landlocked, I'm not too familiar with the natural grouping of palm trees. To anyone who did grow up around endemic palm trees, please let me know if I made any mistakes in the comments. Once that second layer of resin had dried, it was time to add the surface texture using some gloss Mod Podge. I applied it in sections, and then I spread it around in a wave-like pattern using my airbrush. This worked far better than the resin attempt. Once the Mod Podge was appropriately wavy, I left that to dry, and it was time to add some fire. For the light source of the flames, I'm going to be using these LED noodles. I connected four filaments in parallel to keep my voltage at 3 volts, and I tested my circuit before moving on. I'll explain where you can find these LED noodles in the description. To create the volume of the flames, I used some polyester fiber fill, which does a great job diffusing the light when glued together in the right way. It can appear as smoke, fire, or explosions. I glued the little tufts of fiber fill in place, and then I worked them into more specific shapes using a felting needle that was given to me by a craftsman. To remove the loose fibers, I carefully burned them away with my butane torch. I followed that up with a layer of yellow, then orange and red and black as the cotton got further and further from the light source. I then finally added some white paint on the crests of the waves and around the feet of the walker, and the last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 4.0. After that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.